Greetings everyone, welcome to another classic WoW.live guide. My name is Melderon, and I'll be your host for this video. Today, we're going to be working on the Paladin and Warlock mounts. These are the mounts that are exclusive to Paladins and Warlocks, and are obtainable via quest chains. Of course, if you're a Paladin or Warlock, you can buy normal mounts, but these mounts are specific to your class, and will be either be free for the level 40 mounts, or cost significantly less than the mount cost for the normal epic mounts. As with all of my guides, guys, there will be timestamps below to help you navigate for Paladins and Warlocks. If you're a Paladin and you just wanna see the Paladin portion of this video, you can do that using the timestamps and the same goes for Warlocks. Also, this guide is available on ClassicWild.live and slides are available on Google Slides. The links to those will be in the description or in a pinned comment below. So before we get started with the actual guide proper, I'd like to go over some pointers for both of these mounts. And you'll hear this thrown around a lot, the Paladin and Warlock mounts are free, and that's actually very true for the level 40 mounts. You have to put out no money and very, very little time to get your level 40 mounts. That's a huge bonus and considerably a reason to think about playing one of these classes. You'll save 80 to 100 gold depending on your reputation and your PvP rank. However, the level 60 epic mounts are not free. They both cost money and require a significant amount of time to complete the quest chains. And we'll look the help of friends and guildies and expensive materials that may be hard to get and gold are required like i said before so you have to think about is it worth your time and energy to get these epic mounts they're really awesome and they're unique but they will take a lot of your time and energy to get these also you have to consider if you're leveling pretty quickly these quest chains will not be able to be completed until phase two is released in classic wow we don't know how long phase one will last but since both quest chains require you to go into dire mall which is not available in phase one you may want to consider getting the normal epic mount if you have the gold if you're leveling up pretty quick in phase one and then maybe do this later for those of you that are leveling slower this won't really be an issue well, that's enough. Let's get on with the actual guide. So let's cover Paladins first. And your level 40 mount, the Warhorse, is very easy to get. So at level 40, you'll receive the quest Tome of Nobility from two certain Paladin trainers. One is Brandor Ironhammer in the Mystic Ward in Ironforge at 23.6, and the other is Arthur the Faithful in Stormwind Cathedral at 39.33. And they'll task you with seeking out Dorthurian Rall, who is a superstar in Paladin quest chains. He seems to be giving you all of your quest chains as a Paladin, and he is located in Stormwind Cathedral at 40.30. You can also just go right to him. You don't have to go get this quest from your Paladin trainer, you can just go right to Dorthurian Rall. And you'll accept the quest Tome of the Ability, and then turn it right back in, and you'll receive your Summon Warhorse spell and Apprentice Riding Skill 75. Five. Extremely easy, definitely worth it. Do not spend money on your level 40 mount if you're a paladin. Now things will significantly change as we go to your level 60 mount. Things are a lot less easy and require a lot of time and gold. So for your charger, this is the epic paladin mount, you'll need eight things. The first you'll need is raw gold, 350 gold, no matter what, you're gonna need that much gold to get this mount. You're also gonna need five Stratholm Holy Water, then they're contained in the supply crates in Stratholm. You can just open those supply crates if you're running Stratholm. Be careful though, if you open them, they do sometimes are trapped and mobs will spawn, but you should be able to get five Stratholm Holy Waters in one run, definitely. The next you'll need is 10 Arthas Tears. These are very easy to get. They're pretty cheap on the AH, and if you're an herbalist, you can knock this out yourself, but they're only 30 to 40 silver for a stack of 10. You only need 10, so really not a big deal. The next thing you'll need are 40 rune cloth and if rune cloth drops off mobs level 50 to 60 plus and they drop off you know normal humanoids you should be able to farm this by yourself extremely easily you can save yourself some gold since rune cloth goes from 1.5 to 2 gold per stack you can save yourself about 4 gold just by farming it yourself the next thing you'll need are six Arcanite Bars. Now these are expensive and they're only created via transmutation. So if you're an alchemist, you can transmute one Thorium Bar and one Arcane Crystal into an Arcanite Bar. But here's the catch, that spell, that Arcanite Transmutation is a two day, 48 hour cooldown. So you can either wait a very long time to make six Arcanite Bars, it's almost two weeks, or you can buy them in the auction house or even better, you can try to find a friend or a guildie to also maybe give you these transmutes at a low cost. If you're gonna buy any in the auction house they go anywhere between 20 to 30 gold maybe even more on the early servers this is a big money sink here so if you can reduce the cost of this part it would be very beneficial to you the next thing you need are 20 enriched mana biscuits and these can only be purchased from the argent dawn quartermasters but you have to be friendly in order to get them if you do the argent dawn commission trinket and you equip it while you're running around in the plague lands or doing dungeons like skullomance or stratholm you can get the friendly pretty quickly these are pretty cheap 60 silver for a stack of five and you need 20 of them the good thing about them though is if you're not friendly and you don't have the time to really farm that reputation you can 
trade these. These are not buy no one pick up. So someone who has friendly reputation just give you 20. You can't eat them unless you're friendly, but you can, do, you can hand them in for the quest chain. Next here I need is an Azerothian diamond. Just one. These are mined from high level mining veins like thorium and rich thorium and things like that. They can be purchased on the AH. They go to one to three gold per diamond. They're not as expensive as the next diamond you'll need is one pristine black diamond. These have a very low chance to drop from high level leap mobs and dungeons are out in the world and they can be purchased on the AH from 30 to 50 gold for one diamond. Now your expected total gold expenditure if you buy all of these things from the auction house you can significantly lessen this if you have the professions or access to these items is about 550 gold and that's an average value the lowest that someone's going to be able to buy their epic mount for is 800 if they have honor reputation of their home faction and pvp rank 3 so you're significantly less than them 250 gold or so but most people won't have the pvp rank 3 so 350 gold less than most people most people will definitely have honor reputation with their home faction by then so this is significantly less than if you were to pay out of pocket for it you just got to consider you know what's harder for you farming the gold or doing these quest chains with people if you're a good group guy you like you have a nice guild and you like forming groups this is a definitely a better easier way to get your mount and cheaper now let's get on to the steps. Step one at level 60, you will seek out, no surprise here, Dorthurian Rall. And he's in Stormwind Cathedral at 4030. And he will give you the quest called Lord Grayson Shadowbreaker, which will task you to speak with Lord Grayson, who is behind him in the corridor in the cathedral itself. So you're going to go turn in that quest at 3733 and accept the quest emphasis on sacrifice. This step is going to require you to acquire the Exorcism Sensor. And to get this, you're going to seek out High Priest Rohan, who's in the Hall of Mysteries in Iron Forge at 237. The only way to get this is to pay him 150 gold. So cough up the money, he'll give you his exorcism sensor, and accept the quest to show judgment. And you're going to take this sensor back to Lord Grayson Shadowbreaker in the Stormwind Cathedral at 3733. So you're back at Lord Grayson and Stormwind, you're going to turn in to show judgment and accept the quest exercising Terrordale. And this will task you to bring the sensor to Terrordale in western eastern Plaguelands. that's confusing southwest of stratholm there's a little town there used to be a town there you'll see on the map the blue circle and you're going to use this sensor on green swirly areas to spawn the spirits you need to kill make sure you clear out terror of all the spiders and undead boars that are in the area and you're going to go into the green area click the sensor inventory and one to three usually three ghosts will spawn in each of these zones you have to kill 25 of these now this is soloable but i highly recommend bringing at least one other person with you probably another pal who needs to get the quest done it just makes things a lot easier and a lot quicker once you kill 25 spirits you're going to return to lord grace and shadowbreaker and stormwind and turn the quest once you turn in the quest, you'll accept the quest, the work of Grimmon Elmore from Lord Grayson, which will task you to speak with Grimmon, who's located in the Dwarven District in Stormwind at 5212. So you're going to turn in work for Grimmon Elmore to him, and you'll accept the next quest, which is Collection of Goods. And this is just a big turning quest. He wants you to turn in 150 gold, 5 Stratholm Holy Water, 10 Arthas Tears, 40 Rune Cloth, and 6 Arcanite Bars. I suggest having all these things ready before you start the quest chain, but if you don't, go out and farm the 5 Stratholm Holy Water, get yourself the Arthas Tears, farm the 40 Rune Cloth, and either buy or make or trade for the six Arcanite bars. And once you turn all these things in, you'll receive the Arcanite Barding, which is for your actual mount, and accept the quest Grimmon's Finest Work, which will task you to bring the Barding back to Lord Grayson for him to inspect it. So you turn in the Barding to Grayson, he thinks it's pretty good, but he also thinks you also need to acquire some special horse feed for your new mount. So accept the quest Ancient Equine Spirit and seek out Meredith Carlson, who's in South Shore Hills, Bread Foothills at 5356. Now she's the one who's going to give you your food, but make sure you have 50 gold on you and those 20 enriched mana biscuits, which can only be bought by the Argent Dawn Quartermasters with friendly reputation, because she's going to give you a quest to task you to bring her just that. So if you have that stuff beforehand, it makes things a lot quicker. So accept mana enriched horse feed, turn in the 50 gold and the 20 enriched mana biscuits, and receive the horse feed. Now you have both items to complete the Ancient Equine Spirit quest. Now, to complete this quest, you're going to have to venture into Dire Mall West. Make sure you have a group of five, and make sure someone either has the Crescent Key, which opens up Dire Mall West, or you have someone that can provide key service, a rogue, blacksmith, or an engineer. If you don't know how to get the Crescent Key, check out my key guide. The link is right there on the slides, and it will be in the description below. And this will task you to kill the first boss, Tendris Warpwood, who's a trant just past the courtyard in Dire Mall West. Now, it's very important before you head to the boss, make sure you kill all of the patrolling trants that are inside the dungeon courtyard area before pulling tendrous because they will pull when you pull him so clear all of them out i think there's like seven or eight of them head down the steps and pull tendrous
Tendris. Once you kill Tendris, the spirit, the ancient equine spirit, will appear and will have a quest turn in over his head. You're going to give him the barding and the feed to quell or soothe his spirit and become attuned to the spirit. And then he'll give you a quest, the spirit will, called Blessed Arcanite Barding, which will task you to return to Lord Grayson back in Stormwind. So head back over there and turn in the quest. So after turning in the quest, you will accept the quest called Divination Scryer from Lord Grayson. And it will task you with turning in two diamonds to him, one Azerothian and one pristine black diamond. So just make sure you have these before you head over to Grayson. Once you give him those two items, you're going to turn in the Divination Scryer quest and accept Judgment and Redemption from Lord Grayson. He will give you a satchel, and in that satchel will be two items, the Divination Scryer and the Blessed Arcanite Barding. Now it's time to finally receive your mount. With those two items in hand, head to Skullomancer with a group of four other players. Now someone's going to need the skeleton key to open up the main door, or again, you can use key service here. Check out my key guide if you want to know how to get the skeleton key. I would recommend bringing some greater shadow protection potions for the group and use them right before fighting the Death Knight. He has a lot of health and does some shadow damage, so having some extra protection or absorb is definitely good to have. Now the optimal group composition for a tank, I'd either go Warrior or Druid. DPS, I would definitely get a Warlock for Soul Stones. You as the Paladin could DPS or heal. And I'd also bring a Mage for food and water and for curse removal because you will be dealing with some curses. Now for the healer, if you're healing, I would also bring a Priest, whether it's a DPS role or a healing role, because you're going to need Shackle and Dispel. Shackles going to be really, really important in this dungeon. Skullmance is pain in the butt, so having the right group composition will really, really help. Now, more paladins are helpful, as judgments are going to really be the key to getting through this encounter safely. And we'll go over the judgments in a second. So you're going to head to the ossuary, and you're going to clear out Rattlegore's room. You're going to kill all of the undead skeletons in the area. You're going to kill Rattlegore, and once it's cleared out, your party's going to stack to the right of the door near this pile of bones you'll see in the video. It's right to the right of the door. It's a pile of bones. This way, in between pulls, you can eat and drink and not be in combat the whole time so very important so what's going to happen is you're going to hide here your tank's going to go out distance pull the mobs bring them back over clear them out your party can then recuperate between pulls there are multiple phases to this pull so when you're ready just one paladin's required if you have multiple paladins not all of them have to do this you're going to go to the center of the room and click on the divination scryer in your inventory to start the encounter once the encounter begins you'll notice that ghosts will start spawning have your tank go out and pull them to your safe zone. Now the first wave, you're going to judge with Seal of Wisdom. And every time you judge with Seal of Wisdom, it will stun the enemies. So I would use your judgment on cooldown, reapply your Seal of Wisdom, and then judge. And it'll AoE stun the mobs. This will make tanking and healing a lot easier for your group. Once the first wave is down, a mini boss of the first wave will come out. You're going to kill him. And then the second wave will start. In the second wave, you're going to judge with Seal of Justice. Same thing, judge it on cooldown. Make sure you stun the targets. And then rinse and repeat. Third wave, you're going to judge with seal of righteousness to stun kill the mini boss fourth wave comes out you're going to judge with seal of light on cooldown to stun them now once the mini boss of the fourth wave is destroyed the death knight dark reaver will spawn and he has some interesting abilities he can mind control which is the spell well he can leech which is drain hp from nearby allies he has a cleave so if you dps stand behind him and has a shadow bolt he has a lot of health other than that it's a pretty easy encounter after you fell the death knight dark reaver you're going to loot the charger's lost soul and you're going to click on it in your inventory to purify it then you should see the charger's ghost walk around the area this is going to be your mount so you're going to click on the charger's ghost and turn in the soul and the barding and as a reward you will receive not only your summon charger spell but journeyman riding 150 congratulations you did it you now have your epic paladin mount enjoy it it's pretty awesome looking it really has a high value of class fantasy attached to it and now you can be just like arthas all right, we did the light, now we're going to do the dark. Welcome, Warlocks, to your amount guide. So, level 40, let's get that out of the way pretty quick. The Felsteed, just like the Paladin, is extremely easy. At level 40, you'll receive the quest Summon Felsteed from certain Warlock Trainers for the Horde, Zevros in the Cleft of Shadows at Orgrimmar at 4945, Cal Soul Reaper in the Magic Quarter at Undercity at 8616, and for Alliance, Demizet Clois in the Slaughtered Lamb in Stormwind at 2578, or from Briarthorn into the Forlorn Cavern in Ironforge at 56. They'll task you to do the same thing. Seek out Strahad Farson in the Barrens, North of Ratchet, at 6336. Very easy thing to do. Just accept the quest Summon Felsteed, and then turn it back in, and you receive your Summon Felsteed spell and Apprentice Riding 75. You should also be able to go right to Straw Hat when you hit level 40. You might not have to pick this up, so if you know where he is, you hit level 40, head right over, and you get your mount. Moving on to your level 60 mount, the Epic Mount, which is known as the Dreadsteed. Now, let's first go over what you'll need to get this as far as raw materials. 
you'll need 412 raw gold, and that includes the 12-ish gold or so you'll need for two shadowy potions. We'll go over what those are, but they are six gold a pop. You need at least two of them, so I put that into the total gold amount. You also need 10 elixirs of shadow power. Now, these can be purchased on the AH. They're crafted by alchemists, and they usually go from two to three gold a pop. Next, you need the six large brilliant shards. These, of course, are obtained by disenchanting blue items at level 51 or higher. There's a small chance that these can also drop from disenchanting high-level greens, but you're guaranteed to get one from disenchanting a blue item. These can also be purchased from the AH from two to three gold a piece. Next, you'll need dark iron ore. This is a mining reagent. You can only get them from mining dark iron deposits located in molten core, black rock depths, the burning steps, or the searing cord. So a raid, a dungeon, or two zones. Now, you have to be a miner to get these, but they are not buying on pickup. You can actually buy them on the auction house, and they're pretty cheap, 40 to 80 silver each. Next, you need 35 black dragon scales. Now, these drop if you skin an elite black dragon kin, level 51 or higher. So these can can be skinned from black dragons in raids or zones or dungeons but they can also be purchased on the AH for about 40 to 80 silver a pop and finally you're gonna need three arcanite bars now these are transmuted from one thurian bar and one arcane crystal it's a 48 hour cooldown on this transmute so they will fetch a heavy price in the auction house if you are an alchemist you can save some coin on this or try to get a friend or guildie to make one for you but they go for approximately 20 to 30 gold a piece so if you add all these up your expected total gold expenditure on average if you're buying everything on the auction house, if you're not crafting these things or getting a deal on them is approximately 550 gold. That's exactly the same average I got for Paladins as well, which is pretty interesting. I'm not sure if Blizzard did that on purpose. I'm not sure they could know really what these items would fetch on the auction house, but they did. It's pretty balanced. So 550 gold is significantly less than 800 gold, someone who has rank three and honor reputation. And there's even a larger difference for people who are just getting honor reputation with their rep. So you can save anywhere from 200 to 350 gold compared to other people. All right, let's get on to the nitty gritty. Let's get on to the guide itself. The first thing you're going to do is receive the quest Morzul Bloodbringer from one of the following NPCs. For the Horde, Korgul in the Cleft of Shadows and Orgrimmar at 4847, or Greshka and Stoner at Twin Basaros at 4955. For Alliance, you're going to pick it up from Spackle Thornberry in the Slaughtered Lamb and Stormwind at 2678, or Jubal Corpse Seeker in the Forlorn Cavern and Iron Forge at 536. And you're going to turn this quest in at Morzul Bloodbringer, who's located in the Altar of Storms in extreme northwestern Burning Steps at 1332. You'll speak to him and you'll accept the quest Rage of Blood, and now you should make your way over to Winterspring. So once you're in Winterspring, you're going to gather 30 Raging Beasts Blood, and these will drop from Moonkins in Winterspring. I've highlighted the areas on the map where they will drop. It'll be north or south of Everlook, and it's about a 30 to 40% drop rate, regardless of the type of NPC you're going to kill. You can kill Ragged Albeast, Raging Albeast, Crazed Albeast, Moon Touched Albeast, or Berserk Albeasts. Once you have 30 of these blood, you're going to return the Morzul Bloodbringer in the Burning Steps and turn in the quest. And as soon as you turn that quest in, he'll give you a crate full of blood, and he'll tell you to turn in that crate to the goblin NPC behind him at the Altar of Storms. His name is Gorziki Wild Eyes. And this NPC will serve as your vendor for a lot of the items you'll need for the Warlock quest chain. Now, it's very prudent before you accept the next three quests to have these following items in your inventory. 10 Elixir of Shadow Power, 6 Large Brilliant Shards, 25 Dark Iron Ore, and 35 Black Dragon Scale. You'll accept three quests, the Bell of Death Mora, the Wheel of the Black Marsh, and the Doomsday Candle. And these are items that will be integral to you getting your Warlock Mount. These are three devices that will be made because of the turn-ins that you give Gorziki. So you're going to accept those three quests and then turn them right back in with the items you have in your inventory. You'll need this for later. But once you turn those three quests, in, you're also going to accept the quest Arcanite from Gorziki, and this will require you to turn in three Arcanite bars. So make sure you also have those three Arcanite bars in your inventory for this quest chain. And then you're going to turn that quest in as well to Gorziki. Now the items you're turning into Gorziki, all of these expensive items, are going to be used to create devices that you will use during the course of the next parts of the quest chain. So for the next part, you're going to accept the quest Lord Bane Hollow from Gorziki. Now make sure you buy at least two shadowy potions from him before leaving. These are six gold apiece. Also, you may want to bring a friend, maybe even two, and other warlocks will be optimal because they need to do this part of the quest chain. If they're not warlocks, you're going to probably have to pay money for their shadow potions because you have to sneak into Shadow Hold, which is located in Fellwood. Also, before you go, make sure you have 150 gold on you because you need to buy something from one of the vendors inside Shadow Hold. So what the shadowy potions will do is they 
they will disguise you as a cultist, so you can walk through the Shadowhold without being attacked. So you're gonna head to Felwood. The entrance to Shadowhold is located in Jadenar at 3559. Make sure you pop the potion before you head in and run all the way to the back of this very large subterranean area. And you'll locate Lord Banehalla, who's located at 3644. He's a Nethrazim located in the back of the cave. You'll be able to turn in the quest Lord Banehalla, and you're gonna pick up the quest from Banehalla called Ulathek the Traitor. Now just a few pointers. At some point in the Shadow Hold in the middle area, you'll come across an area with slimes. Now these slimes will attack you regardless if you're disguised or not. So either try to navigate away from them, or if you do have to engage them, you're gonna have to pop another shadow potion because if you get attacked and hit, your disguise will fall off. You may want to bring an extra shadow potion just in case you do get hit. Also, you have to have the shadowy potion buff in order to talk to Bane Hollow. That's very, very important. So now you have to find Ulithek. So you're going to walk back to 4148 in the Shadow Hold, and you'll come across an area where you'll see Ulithek standing with a bodyguard in an area that's pretty much in the middle of Shadow Hold, between where Lord Bane Hollow is and the entrance. You're going to run up to Ulithek, you're going to speak to him, and this will cause him and his bodyguard to attack you. Now remember, as soon as you get hit, it will remove your disguise and may pull other units. And there are two units standing outside the room that he's in. Those will probably get pulled as well. This is why it's important to have a friend with you. It's going to be very hard to solo all four of these mobs but once you do kill him you're going to loot the traitor's heart from his corpse drink another shadowy potion so you're disguised again head back to lord bane hollow at the end of shadow hold and turn in the quest then from lord bane hollow you're going to pick up the quest zerothian stardust and all this quest tasks you to do is buy the zerothian stardust from ordan who is directly next to lord bane hollow for 150 gold this is why you needed that 150 gold before you came here now with that in hand you're going to turn to groziki wild eyes in the burning steps turn it into him and accept the quest imp delivery and when you pick up imp delivery you'll receive a imp in a jar in your inventory you'll need this for the next part of the quest chain this quest will task you to head to skullomance so get with a group of four other individuals and head to skullomance now someone will need the skeleton key to open doors in skullomance so make sure you check out my key guide if you don't know how to get the skeleton key also you can use key service here a rogue uh, engineer or a blacksmith you're going to head to rattlegore's room which is the same room that needs to be cleared out for the paladin epic mount at 1447 and loot the viewing room key from rattlegore's corpse this will allow you to open the viewing room and enter the laboratory. So you're going to enter the laboratory where Raj Frost Whisper is, and you're going to clear all the trash NPCs. You don't have to kill the boss to complete this quest. Once all the trash is cleared, you'll notice on the right side of the room, there's an alchemy laboratory. You're going to head over to that table, and you're going to click on the imp in a jar in your inventory. This will release the imp and allow him to perform his experiment. And you're going to wait for this to complete. Once it's completed, you'll be notified that the quest is complete, and you're going to turn to Gorziki Wild Eyes in Burning Steps and turn in the quest. All right, now we're on the last and most complex part of the quest chain. So after you turn in and release the imp, you'll accept the quest Dreadsteed of Zoroth from Morzul Bloodbringer, and you'll receive the instructions. Now, you might want to read these just to gloss over them, but I'm going to go over all the instructions to get this quest done. Before you leave, you have to purchase Jeevi's Jar, Zorothian Glyphs, and the Black Lodestone from Gorziki. So make sure you don't leave before you have those three items. The total cost for these four items is 250 gold. And you're going to get another party of four more people and head to Dire Mall West. Now, you will need the Crescent Key to open up the doors in Dire Mall West or use Key Service. Again, if you don't know how to get the key, check out my key guide. Now, the point of this is to clear all the mana remnants near all five pillars in Dire Mall West to deactivate them. There is one pillar as soon as you walk in in the courtyard. There are two above the area where Tendris Warpwood is, one of the bosses in Dire Mall West. And there are two in the inner sanctum area. So once you get all five of those pillars deactivated, you know, all you have to do again is just kill the elementals near them. You'll notice you'll see this pulsing blue that comes off the pillars and this will tell you that the pillars are deactivated once all five are deactivated the inner part where the boss Imol Thar is located will be open to you so you'll be able to walk in there you will next have to defeat Imol Thar but I highly recommend waiting until all of the night elves that are attacking him are killed by Imol Thar before you attack once the area is clear you're going to engage with the boss and you're going to attack him he's pretty easy to take care of he does have a lot of health and he hits pretty hard and he does enrage when he gets to a certain HP so just make sure you take him down quickly once Imol Thar is defeated Defeated, make sure your group regens health and mana because the next part can be a little tricky. So you have these three items in your inventory. GEV's jar is the one you're going to use right now. When your group is ready, you're going to walk up to the center of the platform and click on the jar in your inventory. This will release GEV, the imp, from his jar and he will place three artifacts around the center of the room. The Bell of Death Mora, the Wheel of Black March, and the Doomsday Candle. Now each of these items will provide a benefit to your group. They will either reduce the damage taken, inflict damage over time, or refresh health and mana to your party. During the fight, these artifacts 
artifacts will randomly shut down and stop working. You'll hear like a power down sound, and it's your job as the warlock to walk over because you have the black lodestone in your inventory. Only you can fix them. You're going to right click on them, and you're going to, a cast window will appear, and you're going to fix them. If you're being hit, however, you won't be able to complete the cast. That's why it's important for the tank to take care of all the mobs that are coming in. And we'll get to that in a second. Now, the reason you're fixing these artifacts is because if all three of them go down, you will fail the encounter and have to restart it. So make sure you fix them whenever they go down. Another key point is that each fix requires one soul shard. So make sure you have at least 10 to 15 soul shards in your inventory just for fixing these items as they go down during the fight. As soon as GEV places the three items, non-elite imps and elite fell guards will spawn and attack your party party approximately for about five minutes and they'll continue walking towards the center of the room your group must fight them off while you fix the artifacts and just put some damage out when you can in between fixing artifacts after about five minutes expires nine runes will light up around the perimeter of where you're standing and when the ninth rune lights up the waves of imps and fell guards will stop and they will despawn now since that part of the mechanic is over you're going to run into the center and use the Zerothian glyphs in your inventory to summon the dreadsteed and the dreadsteed will come out and you're going to start dpsing them also lord helnorath his owner if you will will come out and you're gonna to have to dps them both down i would highly recommend focusing on one and then burning the other one down now the dread seed has a little bit more health than lord helnorath but lord helnorath can sleep members of your party so i would probably knock him out first because he's the most annoying and then move on to the dread steed once the Dreadsteed and Lord Heldnoroth are defeated, you can turn in Dreadsteed of Zoroth to the Dreadsteed spirit that is now walking around, and congratulations, you will receive not only the Summon Dreadsteed spell, but Journeyman Riding, or 150. Now, a very important thing is the Zerothian Glyphs, the Black Lodestone, and GEV Jar will remain in your inventory. You can actually use these items to help other Warlocks, and this is 250 gold worth of stuff, so you could maybe even charge a little bit as well to help Warlocks get this quest done, so make sure you keep these, hold on to them, help your friends or to make some cash on the side enjoy it you've done it congratulations this is not an easy quest chain and i have to say this is probably my favorite mount in classic wow i don't play warlock but i'm always jealous of seeing warlocks running around this mount it is ridiculous looking so great job well guys that does it for this guide i really enjoyed making it this was a lot of fun i don't really main paladins or warlocks so i really learned a lot making this guide if you like this type of content please leave a like below and if you enjoy the type of videos myself and my brother make drop a subscribe and join us in becoming a member of the def camp Melder on TV community. We make a lot of other content as well, so stay tuned for that. We make Def Talk, which is a podcast where we upload to Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and iTunes. I also work on another piece of content called Classic Wild Gems, in which I explore some of the less known parts of the game. And Def Camp, my brother, streams regularly on YouTube and Twitch, so you can follow us there. We also have a very active community on Discord, so if you want to be part of the Def Camp Melder on Discord community, the link is in the description below, and you can follow us on Twitter for video updates and more. Also, this guide, along with many others, is uploaded to Classic Wild Out Live the definitive Classic WoW resource that has an active forums, integrative tools, community, and guide content for the Classic WoW community. So head over to ClassicWoW.live, jump in the forums, and upload your own content. And last but not least, I want to thank my patrons who make videos like this possible and regularly increase the quality of our videos via their support. And definitely want to thank the stream team, regular supporters of Def Camp Stream. Thank you guys so much for your support. With that, I'd like to bid you all farewell. I'll see you on the next piece of content. Keep on key binding and grinding, and I hope to see you you all in classic Azeroth. Thanks for watching. Greetings adventurers, Melderon here. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you'd like to support some official Def Camp Melderon t-shirts and hoodies, head on over to Brandung Media's Def Camp Melderon TV merchandise website. The link is in the description below.